I did not. Hi, Maria. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, cool. Happy Mother's Day and Ramadan Kareem to all the Muslims. I'm just going to get my mom on here so we can begin. Just give me a moment, guys. Hi, Esther. Hi, Ubi. Did she request yet? Hi guys. Just bear with us a few seconds slash minutes. <coughs> All these views because of Amina Mohammed. I'm sure it's because of Amina Mohammed. It's not because of me. <laughs> okay, so we have my mom coming up in a second. Hi, Auntie Azzy. So we're waiting for my mom to come on. Hi. I made it. I made it. I actually pressed the right. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you? How's how's your day going so far? Well, you put me in this um position which I'm not quite sure how it all works and so let's see. It's the <laughs> most Mother's Day I've ever had, but thank you so much and happy Mother's Day to all the other mothers out there. I'm going to do quick introductions now. I, I was just telling everyone, I'm pretty sure all these people are here to see you, not me. But I'm going to introduce myself. So I'm Nadine. I'm a filmmaker based in Nigeria, but currently stuck in London due to the pandemic that's going on. My mom, mommy, as I know her, <laughs> um, she is the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina J. Mohammed basically number two in command of the United Nations and so familiar with, you know, how it works there. Um, and yeah, so this is us. Mommy, do you have anything to say? Did I miss out on anything? You're going good so far, Nadine. Keep going. That's me, Amina Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I thought it was important to do this live, not only because it's Mother's Day, but also because... A lot of people know you as the work that I'm in a J. Mohammed, but we know you as just little mommy. So I thought it'd be cool, you know, to explore that side too and let people see, you know, that you're not just, you know, all serious and about work and about the world, but also about family and us. So, Amina. <laughs> so, mommy. <laughs> so. Um, what has it been like raising kids? You have six of them and we all are completely different. What has it been like raising us? Um, it, it's been an amazing journey. If I look back and I know that's 2020 vision, it's been ones of absolute joy and love and frustration and pull my hair out and uh, cry and, and all the things that if they are bringing up their children. Um, all of you are really, 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 really different from from the uh, from the time I had you all, um, and you all came in different ways. And um, you know, Samira came earlier than expected because I was still too busy with my job. And just as I was about to get in a car to go nine hours down the road to a project site. Um, there I was. I had a show, and that was it. I had to rush off to the the hospital and. And um, she came 
early, we didn't even have a name for her. So we just finished off your father's name and she became Samira. Um, yeah, because my, sorry, my dad's name is Samira, guys. So literally they just added the A <laughs> and that's Samira. Yes, we did. And I went to, you know, a man that was, um, named because as I was giving birth to her and I was lined up with a number of other women in a public hospital and the the the, the imam was called prayer and so she became iman um, you know to Bilal and and uh, when I think about it you know I was thinking okay I love the sound of uh, you know the, the call to prayer and of course the person of that in Islam has been Bilal um, but you know he refuses to call to prayer so yeah, you've all, and he came, you know, the cesarean. So yes, everything has come in one way or another, uh, but it's been the road that we've traveled together in bringing you up that has been, for me, the most, um, the most precious and the one that I hold on tight right now because these are really tough times um, uh, with the pandemic, COVID. Well, why am I called Nadine? Because everybody's always saying Samira, Iman, Bilala, or no names for Islamic names. And then there's Nadine. Yeah, so there's Aisha, sorry. And Nadine, um, I, I just love that name. There was a one <laughs> um, older sister, like, um, in my, in school um, when I was young. It was so beautiful. And her name um, was Nadine. And I just thought, okay, that's it. And then I went to see what it meant. And I just loved the idea of a tiny dewdrop. And so um, you got that. Yeah, I think that my name is like the most special because it's clearly the most unique. Yeah. Hear what they have to say. You're in trouble after this. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people have been asking me. I think I so I asked people some questions. Um, I asked people to ask me questions before this to see um, what people wanted to know. And the number one question that kept popping up was, "How do you balance career and being a mom?" Mm -hmm. I don't actually ever think you do that. It's only when you look back and you thought, wow, how did I do it? Because you're, if you're giving enough of your, what is your responsibility, your children and the way they end up, and yet you have this career and, and it's been about people between what you have and you're privileged, but yet are your responsibility, your children. I mean, the things that you want to do in the wide world to, to all those that you have. Um, so it's been a struggle, but I have Say that if I was not a Nigerian and in Nigeria, I don't know how I would have done it because the support system in, at home, um, the staff in your house are not staff, they're family. The lady that started after you guys with me, Fatima, is still with us. And as far as I'm concerned, she's my sister. Um, you know, she's mother. Um, and so support systems um, in Nigeria are unbelievable. And it is that strong fabric that we have in our society. These days has been torn at, but at least when I had you, um, uh, for me, that's how I survived, is, is that I knew that I had a strong base and it was full of people who loved you and who cared for you. So it was really basically teamwork that allowed me to do the things that I do today. Yeah. I think, to be honest, even growing up, having Fatima and Auntie Maria and Auntie Lani around, it just made sense and made us feel more, I guess, connected at all. But even the times that you had to go, it was like you were still there. It was like replacement mommy until you got back. <laughs> I know. But, you know. Up until you were two years old, <laughs> I used to travel with you and Fatima. And how did I do that? Um, I moved from when I, I was working as an em em employee to an employer. Um, and I had four fantastic colleagues. Um, and, and so we... We sort of made the rules in our company that put family first. And I remember saying to them, well, you all have to travel with your wives. Um, and then I would say to your dad, well, um, you know, Fatima's coming with me. And then I would take the baby up until you were two years. But after two, you really needed to be at home. And so Fatima was still there. What you needed to have was stability that, you know, you knew that the home was stable. And hopefully um, we did a good job as, as your mother and father. Um, as your sister, you know, my sisters are like your mother. So, I mean, I just, I just feel blessed. And um, it has been, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy world. I, you work, um, 
you know, whether they're going to get a, a disease or an infection. <laughs> Having your cousin Amira um, and Samira in the hospital beds, I died of each other because my sister was away and I was, you know, just torn. This, my daughter's actually doing worse my niece, but I was so concerned about my niece because her mother was there. So, you know, you really are through your life through different um, circumstances. Uh, it's, it's awful. It swung on this concrete and it fell on her foot and we were all like, oh my God, the hospital's on strike. What are we going to do? Um, and finding this, this hospital where quite frankly, you were just so afraid going to come out with an infection and the doctor saying to me, well, we have to do the now otherwise she's going to lose her foot and she was just three she was so tiny she was like a little chicken um and that, that happened and it was amazing and even when i went to the uk afterwards and they looked at it and they said you have wonderful doctors in nigeria and that's true we may not have a very good system but we have wonderful doctors and so yes it's been a roller coaster and i've always looked forward to getting you through school including you nadine that used to do do all sorts of things in boarding school to get yourself better food over the fence. Um, <laughs> to, to just, you know, praying that you're okay, get married and now you're out. And then I think you're married and, you know, you're on with your life. And then suddenly, no, you're not. So <laughs> got you for life. <laughs> yeah, I think out of all of us, I'm the one that's your biggest now. <laughs> Even after marriage, I call you at 1 a.m. with my problems. Well, I mean, it happens all the time. Mothers, daughters, sons with Mutari. I remember, I don't remember how long for. It probably wasn't as long as it feels. But I remember when he stopped talking to me, I didn't understand why. And if, uh, you know, what did I do wrong? And it was incredible. But then family is wonderful because uh, he had the rest of you. So I always knew he was okay. Um, you know, and so that different, 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 different things. When we lost Suleiman me and how she took it and that worried us and worried me um but in the end family hangs together and i think that that's what we're learning now um in this era is that mother's day helps you appreciate mothers and grandmothers and sisters who are mothers, mothers i mean mothers in any way um and even when we look at how um we suffer so much um in the world today about the burden um on the shoulders of women and we are asking men, what is this all about? I wish they would remember that there was not a man in the world that is not one of a woman. And today it's of all women in all their shapes and sizes. And at the end of the day, mother. Yeah, I think one thing I admire, I think for all of us when we say this, that you always put us first. For me personally, especially when I've had, you know, um, the obstacles thrown in my way with surgery and my miscarriages you always put us first and I think that's something that I definitely do admire about you work wherever you are in the world kind of just stop and you're like okay because <laughs> I remember there was a time where I think I wasn't feeling so well and I knew that was an important month for you as well because of work but every time I called you'd answer and you'd be like Nadine yes <laughs> you wouldn't even let the phone ring and I thought that was an so if I do say so, you do well <laughs> thank you thank you well for all the mothers out there you'll have to know that the minute that happens our hearts jump and we we all want to be sure that our children are safe and it's it's a it's a huge thing it's a huge responsibility we, um, I always said that from the time that you give birth that's the last time that you will sleep the way you did before um, so we never sleep the same. And now we can communicate. Um, it's sort of like your phone's on 24-7, just in case. How how did you... I know, like, you know, obviously we're, we're from Nigeria. We, we're from a culture that, I guess, sometimes is conservative and has um, certain... But how did you get over, for instance, having letting us express ourselves the way we want through our careers and different personalities. So for instance, with me being a filmmaker and wanting to study film, and I know loads of people are against going to study film and paying school fees just for that. Why, why did you, I guess, let us have that experience? Well, I never got all, I never got the education I wanted and I just thought that that was so important. But I also think it's important you follow your path. 
Um, and I have to say, Nadine, when you said you wanted to go into film, it's not that we didn't think, oh my God, I did. But suddenly, oh God, she wants to be an actress. And I was just thinking about how tough that was. Um, and so saying to you, oh, well, you know, it would be really good that, you know, if you got behind the camera, life would be much longer. You could have a career in the front of a camera. You probably would have just a few years or days, I don't know. And, you know, my respect to all the film stars out there but you have such a tough life. Um, and so I'm so glad that you, you thought it was better to be behind the camera instead of in front of it. Um, but I do believe in your paths. I think that you have to choose that and own it and be responsible. Um, and it, it is a journey. You know, it's a journey that you get the destination, which will be, you know, very, very far in the future, hope, hopefully. Um, and you have, to, you have to make that journey yours. Um, and you can have forks in the road where you choose. But I think what I wanted to make sure was that at least the first choice was yours and that at the end of the day, there's only one judge and that's God. Mm -hmm. You know, what can we do to feed you with advice, with experience, with opportunity, um, the things that, um, you know, perhaps we wanted for ourselves and, you know, that's it. Yeah, well, I... I can definitely say I'm lucky because if I did study film, I don't know where I'd be right now. <laughs> Probably what, what you, I mean, what you proved with the film because it gets back and yet what you've done, like many, many young people in Nigeria, I'm so proud of Nigerians. I'm so proud of young Nigerians. I'm so proud of young because what you've done is that you've created your own space and you've made your own work and your own earnings. And so you're not waiting for somebody to give you a job. Um, mm -hmm. And I that while there are many who need a job and we should try to make get one, I just, the spirit of young people um, to go out and get what they need to get, um, to survive, to share. I think that's the, that for me is the hope, um, you know, after COVID, even after COVID. So. Yeah, I always, I always tell my friends and even Iman and Bilal, like literally, if there's no opportunity for you, you go out and you create it for yourself. I think that's how I've managed to, I guess get to where I am. Loki following your footsteps. No, oh, no, no. You have you have your own path, and maybe you can learn from some of the things that we've done. But it's good to experience uh, down the potholes and the road. Um, I mean, I always look at me, and I, I just um, I'm amazed at the patience she has um, to be a teacher and take care of that age group of children um, all the time because the stop like doctors and nurses, it's a vocation. So she's just doing it all the time. Wow, this is really, um, you know, this, this, this is absolutely inspiring that she gets on and does that all the time. Mutari, who travels the world and you just never know where he's been to. I think he's been to more countries than I've been to. Um, but, you know, that he's constantly inquiring. He has such a mind of inquiry. Our mm -hmm. Sam and Maya, um, you know, who are just beautiful people. Um, and a man that I didn't know could write poetry till I picked up something one day and I thought, wow, who wrote this? And it was a man. Um, <laughs> Bilal, can you imagine Bilal has a beard? <laughs> yes. So going, <clears throat> going back to the whole COVID experience, we are experiencing, I guess, things that we never thought or imagined we would, especially, well, I didn't. Um, would you say what is going on has brought family closer or more apart? I think it's done a number of things. I mean, you know, God knows we, he hit the pause button on the world and this, this pandemic that has come, that is a human crisis. And, and I'm in New York and I have thousands of people that have been infected and thousands that have died. And, and I want to say, you know, happy mother's day to all those frontline workers who are mothers as well and have to stay away from, um, their children sometimes but you know all the mothers that we lost because they were old people them as grandmothers but at their mothers of someone and I think that that for me was very painful I think what has happened is that two things have that we've been put in place in our homes where we are longer you just asked me how did I manage work-life balance now work-life is in the same space mm -hmm. um, and in the beginning I think it was probably fun now, I mean, people are tearing their hair out. And some people, they've managed to structure a day so that the love balance happens in those four spaces. Space is just closed. 
some are doing well and some are not doing the horrible for this violence um kids that have been abused and um so there's lots of stresses and strains um but i think family has begun to appreciate one another i see some videos that are amazing and how fathers and mothers are coming together with children um and would not have had that space before so i think it has across the distance where with me and you UK and and with Sami in Nigeria um and my sisters and my mother um i do think that it has made us reflect okay more that we need to make the time if even if we think we don't have the family um and i think that the covid is a test of how strong the bonds are how strong that fabric is. and some have made it and some have not and all of us will have a chance to come back and try to look at it differently um and in defining family um you know you suddenly find at least i believe my family here out you my blood family is my office it's my it's work with me um hadiza nelson Florida, i mean you name them they are a whole family for me here so i think defining family for me has been much broader um and it's just seen how that fabric is 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 pretty strong and 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 certainly in New York the one that taps me on the shoulder every day is Esther that's family <laughs> yeah i think for me one of the main things that i've noticed <clears throat> more than anything is mental is the struggle with mental health because even with for example with my foundation my love foundation where we um focus on the mental health of women who have experienced loss with just women in general we found that a lot more people are reaching out to us with anxieties of not only being scared of what will happen if i get covid but also how it's affected their lives in the sense of they can't go out and buy things for their kids for for the babies that are coming or if they have a hospital visit they don't want to go with the fear of um with the fear of getting covid so you have all those anxieties of being a mother but then again you know in covid time so you have like triple anxiety so i think that it's it's um i i guess it's just something that i really want to work on but i i know lots of um ngos and and the un is um taking action to mental health as well well one of the things that that happened when we when i first joined the un in this capacity was uh, the secretary general taking up mental health as a big issue for him this is very important in fact next week we will have um a lot to say um in policy briefs and how we can help and what we're doing um with our tools and things for mental health mental health has changed considerably <clears throat> for what it used to be years ago and you understood it as institutionalized and the stigma around it and 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 so it was set in a in concrete what has happened now is that suddenly we realize that so many young people so many stresses and strains um have have um have ended up with a, a i think a mental health crisis I just give a big shout out for the the frontline health workers in mental health let's not forget it's not just about the doctors in the hospitals and the nurses in the hospital health care work but there's also the mental health work mental health uh, care workers so it is a big deal it, it's a big issue when you come to suddenly find yourself with anxieties you're on your own or anxieties in a family that you can't cope and so you feel less um and i think all of those things it's 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 okay those feelings are normal um and 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 therefore what you need to do is to get the help to try to manage um new norms in the environment that we find ourselves in and to reach out um i also say that we need to look around us find out if you know ann or nadine or samira is okay um and if they're not the okay that we knew them to be okay we need to ask um so we need to care about people and we need um to know that everybody has their different vulnerabilities um and that in mental health time of covid um it is about the isolation it is about the uncertainty it is about you know oh my god my life going to a standstill will i have a job will i be able to pay rent um what is going to happen after this because certainly the world is not going to be um and i and i think that you know mental health is a very big issue and i'm glad that we're talking about it as a sense of well-being there is the physical there is the mental and it's about um and and so that part of it finally we're shining a light on so that we can bring people out from that darkness and from that that sort of uh, place where they were very lonely yeah 
Yeah, you know, I, you know, I'm your, you know, I'm your number one stalker online. So <laughs> I'm guessing that was what that women women's rights for all video was about. Oh, that was an amazing piece of work because um, with Anne Marie in the office and and, and colleagues, um, you know, the Secretary General had said development is also an emergency. Um, we're dealing with a health pandemic, um, but the prescription that we're taking for health is having side effects where people are losing their jobs and the economy is part of it. So you're sort of like, do I survive COVID or um, survive my daily um, you know, wage because I need to eat? We have to do everything for everybody. We should be able to save them from COVID-19 and we should be able to make sure that they are safe with their livelihood, their, uh, their economy. So we have, that's what we decided to do was to make uh, development as much of an emergency um, the economy as much of an emergency as health and bring them together. Um, and then, you know, I thought everything that we're reporting right now is how, how women are suffering and they are, you know, whether it's gender-based violence um, or, and that you're in your home with the perpetrator and you can't get out because you're locked down um, or it is really eking that living um, to bring home, which you are now at home and you're going to eat. Um, it's health, you can't get services. So I decided uh, with, with our colleagues that, hey, why don't we just put women um, who are leading and helping us getting out of this? Because there's a huge leader in the world. There are many women leaders who don't have the, necessarily are in the, in the position of power, um, but they are leading. Um, and I think that uh, this is what we try to show, heads of state and government, heads of the agencies of the United Nations, um, people with disabilities, um, our um, uh, people in the entertainment world. We show faces of women who are doing about this so that there is also the hope um, and the leadership that you see coming from women and we're going to continue doing it and it is about women rising in spite of the burden um, for all because we are about everyone there is no woman in their family that excludes one or another we put our hands around everybody um, our arms around everybody so yeah women rise is about us rising to the to the to the leadership and and, and getting out getting us out of this huge mess Mm -hmm. So with your <clears throat> slightly derailing the conversation from COVID, when with your job, right, we mm -hmm. love the access we get <laughs> when it comes to celebrities and you meeting all these people. So for you, it's probably normal because it's like, you know, like it's work. But for us, when you send us pictures and the time zones are different and we wake up and we see a picture with you with Obama or Angelina Jolie or Coldplay or Bono. We're just there like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, why aren't we with you? And we just lose our minds because we want to be there. We want to meet people. And the truth is, even when we do meet them, we kind of just hide behind your gillet, <laughs> which is really bad. But then what what is it like for you meeting like being in that whole i guess scene meeting kings and queens and celebrities i think maybe we've lost her or is it just me okay i go back um okay so i have to do this now because i'm trying to learn this technology Look, every one of the people in the entertainment world is, has got, is really a human being at heart. And those that I work with, they bring that heart using their power um, to help others. And so I'm so focused on what it is that they can do to help us to help the world. Um, and so sometimes I don't see that stardom, but they, they're amazing people. I mean, I think Angela Kijo is one of my favorites because when she helped us to get on the stage with the 2015 Sustainable Development Goals, um, she just got on the stage and belted out this song and she didn't have any music around her. And I thought, wow. Um, so I was in awe of her, but I had to sort of wait and be the DSG and, okay, Angelique, this is pretty good. But, you know, it's, it's amazing. Or, or when I'm on, you, know, you guys are saying to me, mommy, you know, you've got to get autographs. So you've got to get a picture. Um, and then I remember getting on the plane one day um, and just settling into my seat. And then Jay-Z walks past and sits in the seat in front of me. And I'm thinking... Okay, so these kids are going to say to me, you have to take a picture. Um, and I'm saying to you, okay, JC's in front of me, but he's gone to sleep now, so I'm not going to do anything about it. And you're all going crazy. I know. They're all saying, wake him up. 
Yeah, I know. But I mean, goodness me, these are human beings um, going on the stage with, with uh, you know, Global Citizen and have Chris Martin say to me, don't be nervous, it's normal. And, you know, I just say, well, I wish I had some chocolate. Okay, I can get you some chocolate. And it's, they're, just, they're just amazing people. Um, and so I, I, don't see, I don't see it in the same way perhaps you do. Um, I also feel like they deserve their being in their space to be the normal selves. Um, but they're amazing. They, I mean, look, influencers, entertainers, um, I cannot tell you. When we went to watch um, in South Africa, Global Citizen, I was sitting next to a couple of presidents and a couple of rappers came onto the stage. Um, and if you saw those thousands of people just move like waves to these people. And I turned to the presidents and I said, oh, wouldn't you like that in your campaign? And it was yes, because they'll never get that response in, in that campaign that these entertainers do. So the way that they use their power uh, for others um, and to help the world, to heal the world, um, is very special. And, and so I honor that space and, and I'm thankful for it. Yeah, I don't think I can maintain my crew <laughs> like you. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would like to, I am in the industry, like film industry, but I think, no, I would lose myself completely if I was in front of Beyonce. Okay, guys, I just want to tell you something. She lost it with Tyler Perry when we were walking in the corridor near oh the movie. <laughs> and it was like, Nadine, behave. Nadine, behave. Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, these are special people and they touch our hearts and... and um, that's that's okay that's what they do and it's it's special okay can i just say for my reps it didn't roll like that what happened what had happened was uh, oh, nadine nadine I, was, I had my script i had my my whole speech ready for tyler perry and then you <laughs> went up to him and said this is my daughter she's a filmmaker and then you walked off and then i'm there standing <laughs> looking at him and i'm like hi I don't know what to say. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Oh. Grab, grab the moment, grab the moment. But this life is, these are precious moments. And, and that's what's fun. I mean, it's, it's great to see you all growing up and being very special. And to moms out there, I know that that is happening to you and your daughters and your sons. But um, I hope that we have many more chats like this. I thought Nadine was crazy to do this. Um, and we really both didn't, I don't know, I've never had Instagram. I know I've got a following and, and my, my team at the office does it, but I've, I've never downloaded the app. Um, so thank you to the people in technology <laughs> who make this possible for us to hopefully um, have a conversation with everybody and touch your hearts, inspire you, um, um, give the uh, guess that it's okay, that you know people are normal and things are happening. And, um, there is no one who has a monopoly on knowledge. We just share. And I think that's what we need to do more, is to share more, to love more, to care more, um, and to get on with it. And also to be, you know, have the courage of your convictions. Go out there and stamp, you know, your footprint, your handprint, your whatever, your voice. And we certainly need voices today because things are pretty, pretty screwed. Yeah. So I have some questions that um, some people asked me to ask you. Um, I couldn't ask, ask, ask all guys. I'm sorry if I don't ask your question, <clears throat> but there are just so many. So um, there's a question here that says, Do, did you always want to be a public figure, a humanitarian, or what you had other dreams? No, I, I found myself looking for a job and there's nothing I've ever not done. Honestly, I've worked in restaurants and, 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 and care homes and um, insurance companies. And mine was about a, a path of survival. And I suddenly found myself in, in a firm of architects and engineers. And I had an Irish engineer that taught me um, everything that I know today um, in project management. And from there, I, I, I told you, this is a journey. Every step, make it count. And you, know, you find yourself in a place and you think it's not where you ought to be. You don't know where you're going to be. Um, I think the only thing that I kept you know, I held on to um, with my faith was that I, I wanted to be, make a difference in people's lives. I wanted people to have um, as much as I did and more. Um, and so that's what I've always done is I focus on the prayers that I have is that please God put me in a position where I make a difference in people's lives. And that for me is fulfilling. Um, it's, it, that, that's what makes me cry is when I see the difference that we can make 
Um, and it may be you're the opening to it, but the teams I've worked with, the people that I have uh, traveled my path um, are extraordinary people. Um, and I thank them for, for making this path. So no, I never, want, I never look for public office. Um, uh, public office found me and I believe in service. So um, I find it very difficult to say no when it's public service for people. Yeah. Um, someone else asked, have you ever been called over ambitious for a lady? Oh, all the time, even now, I think. Um, yeah, absolutely. And why not? I don't have any apologies for it. I'm always trying to grow and to be like someone else when I grow up. So um, uh -huh. I have lots of people. I mean, I, the heads of my agencies that I work with, there's over 42 of them. There are some amazing women there. I love them dearly. And they give me inspiration every day through their challenges, through their successes, through their inspiration. Um, and so, um, but yes, you do. <clears throat> I mean, ambition is... Um, is defined by people differently. Um, if my ambition is to see a world without poverty, so be it. I have no apologies for that. Um, I'm not looking for an office. What I'm looking for is the opportunity to make a difference and to be at the table to use that voice and power to do it, um, where someone is not doing what they're supposed to be doing to call them out. Um, but if there has to be a reason for that. You can't just be doing it for the sake of it. You have to be doing it because you want a result someone's life and that person's life has got to be um, those that are vulnerable don't have the opportunity frankly my continent Southeast Asia actually COVID has shown us how that vulnerability is right here in New York um, and so for me that's brought home that this is a world opportunity this is a global opportunity a world opportunity where our human family needs to really think about what we're doing I mean how interconnected we are um, and uh, we ought to think about things differently. I don't think the world's going to be different. It's going to, it is going to be much more different the day after COVID, but it may not be if we don't rise up and, and really right the wrongs um, and uh, be brave about it and, and have a voice and, and, and go for it. Yeah. Someone, someone's just commented saying you've already made a difference. I don't know. I mean, you tell that story after I've uh, spent my time on earth and gone into the hereafter. Um, I, I hope that, that I, I die in, in harness in doing the work that I love doing. And it doesn't matter where I do it. I can be on the 38th floor of the United Nations or I can be on the ground just doing the basic work we need to do with the hundreds and thousands of NGOs in the community. Whatever way it is, I'm fulfilled. And, and I thank God for my children. I thank God for my life. Um, this is a special month of prayer and reflection. Um, we're not perfect, only God is perfect. And, and so we keep striving to be um, the best that we can be. So where to, well, first of all, are you retiring anytime soon? And if you <laughs> are, where are you going? No, I'm not going to retire, but I think I see myself going back home um, to, to Gombe in Nigeria. Um, it, it's not, it's not a village. It's a big town now. Maybe it used to be some decades ago. Um, but I want to be back with the community. I'd like to think that my days would end with everything that I've harvested in my life. I will continue to make a difference at a slower pace because the one thing that gets to is age. Um, I don't know how, <clears throat> how long I have, but, um, I also think it's very important for, for people like us to, to move to the side for people like you and your, um, your generation uh, to take up what we've taken up over the last 30 years or so. Uh, everyone has their time. And I, I just believe that, you know, going back to the community for me is the best place to be and to, to share, to help, to, to be the backstop for many young people who want to have a touchstone to say, so how do you do this? And mm -hmm. I want to be there for any young person. So as a mother today, I, um, for the six of you, I actually see for all your cousins, I see for your friends, I, um, I see for the young people in my country and around the world that um, the spirit of motherhood lives in, in all of us. And, and so that's what we should share and that's what we should do something about. So yeah, not retiring, but I will go back. <laughs> Did you say you'll go back to Gombe? I will, I will. You all know that and you know that I'm going to do it. So I wish you would just stop fussing about it. It's, it's one of the best places in the world. Um, everybody, <clears throat> you walk into a house there, everybody loves you. They feed you, they care for you. Um, I don't know a more caring place in the world than my hometown. 
and I'm very happy with that. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so that's where you're going. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm not going to Abuja. <laughs> I'm in Abuja for now because I can work or in New York. Um, but I honestly, I'm looking forward to going home. Yeah, to be honest, I think we're all looking forward to going home right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, no, uh, I think once again, we just, uh, everybody out there, um, hang on to each other. <clears throat> it's very special um, relationships that we have and um, we will get through this together. Uh, it does have a human face. Um, when people say how many people have died in New York, I don't want to talk about numbers because they are people, each and every one of them has a whole bunch of people around them that will be affected mm -hmm. by this. And so I'd like to think that we're not only here for each other to get through this, but we must be here for each other the day after. And we must come out of this stronger. We must build this world back better. Um, mm -hmm. And we must address the inequalities that we see where one person is privileged over another, just perhaps because of where they were born or the resources that they have. Um, and this cannot continue. This cannot continue. So yeah, Nadine, this has been a really fabulous morning, at least for me here in New York. Thank you for bringing me into your world. Where's Iman? She's, you know, <laughs> she's sitting somewhere. beside me and she doesn't want to come on. Same as Bilal. Well, Bilal's not here, but I tried to convince him to come. But you know, I'm the most confident, so. <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a mouthful when you get off here from your <laughs> but, um, no, I love you all dearly. Um I love all my sisters. My mother is such a special person and I hope that somehow she will get this recorded or otherwise. But yeah. um if not for her, I wouldn't have the courage of my convictions. I wouldn't be able to do all the things I do with dignity. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter if I'm washing dishes in a restaurant or I am the deputy secretary general. Um, well, there is dignity in work and in doing the right thing. So um, thank you, mom. Um, and thank you to all the mothers out there for being who you are. And to my daughters, uh, my daughter that is a mother and my daughters that I want to be mothers. So will you get on with it, <laughs> girls, marry and have babies so I can have grandchildren <laughs> more. Um, but you know, yeah, love you all dearly. Before before you go, I'll just ask, I just realized there's been people asking questions on here. So I'll just ask three random ones. So there's one that says, what what makes you dress in Atampa all day, every day? <laughs> it's my identity. I mean, that's who I am. That's, that's my clothes. Um, when I first came here to New York, um, somebody said, so when are you going to wear clothes, normal clothes? And I said, they are normal. Um, they're normal to me. Um, so, yeah, I, of course I put jeans and a t-shirt on every now and again. But I don't go to work mm -hmm. with it. Um, so I, I guess this all really started when I got married and a sense of responsibility and, and appreciation for our clothes. And now we, 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 uh, we promote them. I think they're really cool. You know, I think young people are making them even better. I mean, look at the masks for COVID, for goodness sake. Is that not a tampa? So, mm -hmm. yeah, tampa rocks, <laughs> excuse me. It rocks. So um, I'm fine with it and, and I love it and I am comfortable in it. And if I'm not in it, I'm not comfortable. So, um, yeah. Okay. Someone else has asked, do you have lows? Like, do you have lows and how do you deal with those days? <laughs> Yes, I do. I have days that I feel very frustrated. Unfortunately, people see these things on my face, so they, they know, oops, something's wrong. And I remember a few PRs saying to me, you know, you have to keep smiling because when you don't, we're wondering, so what's up? Um, yes, I've had a couple of really, you know, and I, and I just sort of center myself because I'm very faithful. Um, what else do I do? I go to my prayer mat and I do turaka. That's what I do when I'm in a real low and I'm in real trouble or I really have lost confidence about um, an issue or something that I have to address and I really need it to work. I go to my prayer mat. I have to tell you, um, God, forgive me. I dump on God. I say, okay, God, I've done it now. I've done the best I can. I can't do any more. I don't know what to do. And then it happens because I think that's what you have to do. You have to let go completely and know that there is, you know, the all seeing, the all knowing um, and, and mm -hmm. it works. So um, for me, it's my faith. For me, it's my faith. Okay. Um, 
Oh, Iman said I should ask you what what do you do in your spare time? Oh wow, I create work. Ask Hadiza and Nelson and people who have worked around <laughs> me. Shiaku. So more work. Um, I create more work because I don't think it's ever done. Um, so that's what I do. Sometimes I might swim um, if I have the opportunity um, and read very rarely because I buy all the books and I'm waiting to read them. Um, okay. And I, I hope I will have, maybe one day in Gombe I will do that. Um, and then I spend some time with, you know, friends in New York. My family is uh, also Joanna and Ellis. And, and so I go and I have great meals with them and uh, a great time uh, sharing you know, our frustrations and challenges and hopes. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, shout out to Antio. Oh, I think I, go, I, think I, I think I go shopping for household stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I buy too many oh, pots and pans and glasses and things that I shouldn't. So I'm not going to do that anymore because I suddenly realized that, you know, there's more to life than shopping, right? Thank, thank God you said <laughs> things that you shouldn't. Iman is here nodding. <laughs> You go. You say you're going to the shop to buy something, and you come back with like a ton of IKEA and Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> I do. I do. Okay, so I think I'm. There are loads of questions, but I don't think we can answer all of them. So, thank you so much for coming on and doing this live with me. I actually, it was actually a lot more chill than I thought it would be. I thought I was gonna be like freaking out. <laughs> but well, I you, were freaking, you were freaking out before this I have to tell you I was sort of like okay I really want to sleep um, <laughs> and then I was just thinking that you know Joanna said to me oh you've got the GMT thing wrong and I thought oh my god are we going to be on time or not on time and then will I press the right button um, will we I hope we haven't bored people we're really sorry if we have <laughs> um, but this is not often I get to, to really talk to my, my daughter. Um, and uh, I know the rest are there and we will go on. I think it's called Zoom. We tried it the other day and it was only your father that couldn't do it right. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think we will try it again. I, I just think that this is, this is a special time, a special day. I know that we se should celebrate mothers every day, but we just do it even more on this day. Um, and in this era where we are shell-shocked by the crisis, um, it's a time to remember more than within your small circle. It's, it's to open up to the rest of the world and to, to check your neighbor, to check your society, your community, the world, and, and be the global citizen that we all are. Um, mm -hmm. Dig deep in our humanity, love more. Yeah. So. Well, on that note, happy Mother's Day, thank, everybody. Thank you, Nadidi. Thank Mommy, you, don't guys. say my nickname online. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Love you all very much and uh, be blessed. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye.